Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I call the Transportation Committee meeting of June the 12th, 2007 to order. Roll call members, we have uh, Councilman Kent Shakespeare that's absent tonight. And now if you'll all rise, we will give honor to our God. Thank you. Father, as always, we come before your throne giving thanks and praise to your name. Father, we thank you for the many blessings that we have been given and bestowed upon in this United States and in this parish. Tonight we recognize those that are leaving this parish, going back to Iraq, Father, and we ask for their safety and their well-being. We ask that you surround them with your love and protection and get them home safely. We pray for all our military and all those that serve our country, whether they're volunteers, Father God, in the fire departments, Lord, or volunteers on the, on the police force, all those who, who bring us safety, we pray for their safety tonight. And as always, Father, we thank you that you secure our gates and our borders with your glory, and we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I do have a two-thirds uh, addition that I'm asking you guys to approve, and that's a discussion of uh, putting a, a striping pro project together for parish roads. So moved, Madam Chairman. Second. I have a motion and a, and a second. We will put that, uh, I guess, last under Mr. Bob's uh, update with the parish problems, so we'll make that 6A. I'll ask him to take care of that underneath that item. <clears throat> the first uh, the first item that we have is under street signs and weight limits. Mr. Valentine, did you, uh, you had said earlier you had a street that you were concerned about or stop sign? Uh, I, I, I mean, uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, been tough to get a proper street sign uh, before we meet. Uh, I'm covered. Okay, thank you. Item number six is an update from our parish DPW director, Mr. Bob Turner. We welcome Mr. Bob tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman uh, Fontenot. Uh, Ken Israel generally gives that update on the parish and state projects, and I'd like him to come forward and do that. Welcome, Kent. Thank you, Madam Chairman, members of the committee. As far as the state ongoing construction, I believe last Thursday night most of y'all should have seen the work going on at the intersection of LA 22 and 70 at Sorrento. They are nearing completion of that intersection improvement project. Also, the project in St. James, the intersection of 3125 and 70, they're nearing the completion of that project. Airline Highway, the department's contractor is putting the final wearing course on that. He, I believe he has finished putting the wearing course on the main roadway. This morning they were working on some of the turn lanes, putting the final wearing course and doing some dressing in the median along airline. So that's two projects that are ongoing. Um, LA 44, I passed this afternoon. The contractor has put up his construction signs. He has put a shield on top of them until actually he starts work. But the signs themselves have been erected, so he should be starting work shortly. Uh, the 2005 roadway program, we're working on AC Road right now with, with the contract of DJ Jagel, and that is the last of the road jobs that will be done under the 2005 road program. Where is where are we on that project? I mean, how much longer? Do you have an estimate of any? I think it's about about a month left. He's got about two two weeks or so on the. The last, the, the back portion of that project, plus about two weeks on the front portion where they're going to relocate AC Road. So he's got about a month left. 
Okay. Any questions from anybody? I thank you for the update. Uh, I do travel airline a lot, and uh, I'm very grateful. It's looking really good. It will be very nice once it's finished. Thank Madam you. Chairman, uh, I might interject a little bit on the pavement on airline. It's different pavement than uh, we've seen before anywhere else. It's uh, a porous pavement, uh, which means that when water falls on it, it'll actually go through the pavement and off of the roadway. If you, uh, on some tests that they uh, uh, done, normal pavement after rain will have little bird baths, standing water, but this particular type pavement will be dry. It'll, and uh, you can tell that uh, they've made provisions for this. As you drive down the airline, every now and then you see this slot that is constructed in the shoulder. And that's actually to take the water off of the outside <coughs> of the bottom of the pavement. So it's uh, really a uh, uh, unique pavement, and I think it's uh, really much, much safer. Thank you for that information. And that's that, good. That pavement, the only problem you're going to have is especially trucks, um, pickup trucks with tires, mud grip tires, like that, it may sing a little bit as you go along more than the regular pavement because of the, the friction, but it may make a little bit more noise. Does that kind of mean we might not get splashed as often whenever it rains? Uh, it's, After rain. it, it's a better friction and it'll drain off the roadway better. Sounds good. Thank you, Mr. Israel. Bob, you want to take up, take up the striping project at this time? Sure. Behind his, because I have you behind him. Yes. Uh, there's been significant uh, uh, comments from the public regarding striping of parish roads. And uh, I feel uh, strongly that given the narrow pavement that we have, striping is extremely important. The, historically, we have not done a lot of striping. We've tended to do center line striping, but not, uh, not a lot of edge striping, not the white edges. Now, s the state has done that. They've done center line striping and edge striping. I did some quick calculations today, and, and we have about 471 parish miles of parish roads in the parish. If we were to stripe all of those with what's called thermoplastic, which is a very long-lasting uh, uh, stripe, which lasts between six and seven years, it would cost about $3 million to stripe the, the parish roads. Now, there are some roads that probably should not be striped because they're, they're so narrow that when you limit somebody to just one side of the stripe, you get it's really too narrow uh, for them to... Uh, uh, to travel on. If you get nine foot or less lane widths, then you can come into some problems. But uh, I wanted a ballpark figure to bring that before you and let you know that I am receiving uh, a significant concern from the public uh, regarding this item. And uh, I would recommend that we do increase our striping and maybe to the extent that we might consider uh, a small striping truck that we could do some striping in-house. Um, if you have $3 million worth of striping and consider it on an annual basis, because it does have to, once we do it, we need to keep it up. It's about a half a million dollars a year. So it becomes rather significant cost, but it is a, uh, a very significant uh, safety factor. I'd be glad to try to answer any questions that you might have. Mr. Yeah. Yeah, Bob, do you know how much we have been spending in it, past years? It's my striping? understanding we've only been expending about fifty to fifty-five thousand dollars on striping, and generally, uh, we let a small this small striping contract, and other projects that we complete, we usually include the striping as a part of the contract cost, and so uh, we accomplish striping those two ways. So far as roads that are not wide enough to put stripes, can we put center line? Yes. I think that what we could do is to uh, dis determine those roads that could have a center line plus an edge line and still have adequate lane widths, and those that do not have enough width for 
lane lines and a center line because they they generally take about an additional a foot to a foot and a half out of your total pavement width. So if you get down to an 18 foot wide road and you take a foot and a half out, you're really too narrow for uh, a two lane road. So uh, it would be, uh, uh, I think, possible to do just stri center line striping on some roads and on other roads do center line and edge line. Okay. Uh, and you're talking about possibly going into the striping business yes, in house sir. i'm i'm what i'd like to do is to do some additional ve investigation because uh, this has came up over the past week so i have not time have not had time to investigate it to the extent that i feel good enough to make a recommendation to you but i am in the process of gathering some prices and some information that i'd like to come back to you with okay where are we on the 2007 striping program the $50,000 that we've got. Yes, budget. we're we're in the process now of creating that list. Okay. Uh, we're we've we've been working on three lists, and uh, it had the third priority, if you will. But our our uh, 2007 road list, uh, which I've handed out to you, very comprehensive, 148, and we'll we'll talk about that right. a little bit later. But in addition to that, the private road list, which we've had to investigate also. So the striping is coming right behind these two. Okay. Well, yeah, as far as no action on this right here, until Mr. Bob comes back with m further information on, on the possibility of going in-house. Yes, sir, I should have that for you at the next meeting. Okay. Council Member, do you have a question? Mm -hmm. Not on this. Bob, this is something that I'm very much interested in. So, uh, you know, I look forward to you getting the answers to the questions that we have and putting a list together. We have uh, many roads in our parish that are dark, you know, either because of the trees hanging over them and they're dark. And on rainy nights, they really can, and I, I know just about all of us in here travel some of those, and they're very scary. So if you could get that done, we would like that uh, that done if, and, and put that on the next meeting. Is that good? Yes, that would be fine. I, I will be able to s give information at that time. Sure. I do have one. Yes, uh, Mr. Lambert does have a question. Yeah, Bob Mr. Lambert. Bob, not concerning striping, but sealing. We had approved the project on uh, sealing some crack, crack sealing on yes. several roads. Yes, as part of our 2006, uh, we have this. some crack sealing uh, uh, $150,000 allocated okay. to, to crack sealing that, so and we will put that project. under contract. Okay. Thank you. We, we do have a project going on on that right now, but I think that it was our intention to do like that 150 every year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to put something in the budget. So it's just about budget time. Just make sure yes. that we have some things for some of those type programs. Th that's really a excellent uh, preventative maintenance mm -hmm. issue if we if we can keep the surface of the road sealed, it's less likely to have the breakthroughs and potholes that we've seen in the past. So uh, it's an item that is well worth the expenditure of the money. Thank you. Okay, uh, item number seven, DPW update. This time it is Mr. Turner that will give us the update. Yes. Thank you. Uh, the first item that I have on there is the road and weed control, which is in your packet. Uh, I've sent that to you, but uh, um, I can go over that on the road department, uh, uh, Sheck Snyder Road, we're still working, we're 95% complete, uh, we have a bulk wall that is needed, Bayou Grand North is completed, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce this next one, Calcota, Calcote is completed. Uh, the first phase of Highway 74 is completed. The second phase is in progress, consisting of uh, the addition of aluminum box culverts. Uh, Blaine Road, culverts have been adjusted to the correct grade. We're digging the ditches to correct. Uh, let's see, we're apparently we're on hold due to some off-drainage, off-road drainage needs that uh, we'll coordinate with the drainage section to make sure that we get that coordinated. The Fife subdivision um, uh, is scheduled, uh, getting ready to schedule to start. We did do three, 33,851 feet of ditches that were dug. We did, uh, as you can see, 
Um, 98 miles of ditches were uh, cut on uh, weed control. 94 miles were sprayed on the road. 97 miles were uh, ditches were sprayed. And I think that we're also going to talk a little later about mowing of state right away. So I'll I'll delay that discussion till we get down to it. Okay. Um, that's essentially the uh, monthly report of what we've done in the road department. Any questions from anybody on that item? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. well, just a minute. Yes, sir. I do. Bob, as far as the grass cutting and, and the weed control, are we, are we where we need to be or are we falling behind? Uh, what I've done is that we've brought in a, um, a consultant to advise us on the type of herbicide to uh, add to our spray program the proper spraying and the application rate uh, uh, that we're doing is pretty was pretty close, but we're we're doing some additional training. So, I guess to answer your question, Councilman uh, Savoy, is that I'm not overly satisfied where we're at, but we are making some uh, improvements in our spraying and mowing program. Okay, thank you. That's what we like to hear. Item C. <coughs> no, item B. I'm sorry. Item B is the uh, private road, and that's this pretty good sized packet that I've put on your uh, desk for each one of you. And in it is that if you recall, we had a number of requests for private roads to be taken into the parish system. And what we have done is to investigate uh, these roads and give you information related to each one of them. Each one in your packet has uh, uh, some comment information related to that particular road. In addition, uh, information that we have on it and as far as the plat and also a picture showing the road. So uh, I don't know how you, if you want to take a um, look at each one of them uh, separately or you want to take some time to uh, consider those. Uh, the summary sheet that I've given you basically talks about the road, the length of the road, uh, the uh, uh, width of the <coughs> pavement, the width of the right-of-way, and the number of homes along the road, and uh, has a comment sheet. For example, the first one on the list, uh, Spelman Lambert, off of Go Place Road, is, uh, uh, it's got 24 uh, homes on the road. And um, it's uh, no ditches, gravel. It's a little bit wider in the front than in the back. And at some point in time in the past, we had done some work on that because there are millings that have been placed uh, at the uh, entrance to Gold Place. I don't know whether that was a special deal that we did to make the improvement of the entrance or, or not, but uh, uh, that particular road has uh, 24 homes on it. And, th and really, that's one that we talked about that kind of generated the need for the list to start with. Um, how if I don't know how you want to go down, whether you want me to uh, make well, comments or... Well, before you go, since that one is the top one on the list, and I do have two people that would like to speak on that, uh, so I'll ask them to come and share share for a minute or two uh, their desires. And the first one on the list is Nelson Williams. Welcome. Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, I guess what I'm looking for, we're looking for help. Um, this this road is, is lengthy, and there's 24 people with approximately, I think, uh, average of three or four people per house. We have an artistic child lives in the very back. We have a bedridden man that lives in the back. Uh, my wife's a nurse, and uh, they actually could not come down the road. My wife was going over taking care of the man. Back. Before January, I asked Mr. Ronnie Hughes to uh, put us up some stop signs, speed limit signs, whatever. We have a lot of feuding along the neighbors up front, uh, and it's understandable. The road's bad. People fly through there. They got kids. It's like a third world country down that road, and we need help. Uh, the drainage ditch, nobody gave permission a year or so ago. They come in, started digging ditches. 
pulled up our coverts, put down the other coverts that I don't really care for. I spent a lot of money on mine and it's gone. Uh, but that's immaterial at this point. Uh, but I do have a quite a, a quite a bit to say, and I appreciate everybody's help on it. It's taken two years to get it to this point. We, uh, I think we do have a stop sign down at the end of the road. We put up our own signs to keep it down at 10 miles an hour. There's so much feuding going down the road for the holes in the roads and the dust and the kids playing that people started pulling up the signs saying that five miles an hour was too slow. I live at the back, five miles an hour is fine with me. Anyway, that's what it was. Uh, food and, uh, the, just all the food, neighbors not getting along with neighbors, okay? The garbage pickup. We got one guy that's coming to pick up our garbage. If we don't get the road fixed, he's not picking up the garbage no more. We're gonna have to dump it in our backyards and your ditches run through there. Second thing is a uh, special school bus to pick up this little girl. Doesn't happen. We sent a letter to, I think, to Mr. Jerry, to Ronnie Hughes, several people, stating why they wouldn't come back there. Uh, there's uh, a lot of people have refused to come down the road. Um, like I said, the parish dug the ditch a year and a half ago. They come in, they started at the beginning, where the road was, was wide enough. We, the road was built, supposedly built to spec. We asked for the parish to take it over. It wasn't built to spec. They come in, they dug a ditch all the way down, I think on the west side, all the way down. On the east side, they started past Mr. Uh, Russian's property because he didn't want them to dig where his fence was. Well, with that being said, we got a ditch halfway down the property and on the other side. It floods there, it makes the road worse. So we was getting no funding from the parish the group down the road said, if that's the case, we don't want the parish to come down the road. They've done come down the road. Our road's tore up now from big trucks coming down the road. They're steady coming down our road, turning around. I built my driveway wide enough so everybody could turn around. I don't, if the parish can't help, I don't care to help them. They come down our road, cleaned out the ditch on the west side for Cypress Gold subdivision through other people's property on Spielman Lambert Road because they built fences across theirs. We let that go. We, we let a lot of things go, and we're just asking for help. Uh, along with that, uh, a lot of times people can't access the road, can't have family functions down there. You've got to go somewhere else. People actually will not come down the road. Uh, cops have called. You know, I'm up here. It's that bad. Did get a few people to fill in. We tried to get together to get money approved from all the lot owners to, to just, let's put gravel on it. Well, Mr. Danny owns quite a bit of property, Mr. Rushing. It cost him a quite a bit of money to do that. But he didn't. When he didn't, it drove everybody else's price up. They said, we're not doing it. You know, we pay taxes. They need to help us take care of this. Granted, I know when Leo Lambert sold this property, that he found a way around the system and he beat the system of Ascension Parish. Unfortunately, I've been asked to sue him. I think the parish needs to sue him because he was able to manipulate the parish and sell this property to owners that had no idea about this stuff. Okay, so if, don't get on, we, I've been heard several committee people saying that, that what he done was wrong and we're having to pay for the, for the fall of it. I don't, I don't think that's right. Um, the road, we was told, was not built to spec. Okay, so me and Ms. Pat Richardson have been working for over a year and a half to get this thing built in spec. We've called Bob, uh, Bill Rue, I think it is, worked with Jerry, we worked with several people. Nobody can give us answers. What do we need to do? What are specs? Well, the answer I got, the road's not wide enough. Okay, so we go out, we get bids on getting this thing built to spec to where, where the parish can take it over, like they do subdivisions or whatever it is they do. Well, we're in the process of doing that. The parish pops up next week. They're digging a ditch on that road that's going to make our road approximately 15 foot wide. Spec says our road needs to be 20 foot. The guy tells me, well, we do this all the time. How can the parish do it all the time, make a 15 foot road, and that's legal, but yet our road has to be built in spec? And we want to continue building our road inspect, and we're going to get it inspect. That's what I was told we had to do. So that led into the thing, Mr. Russian has property, his fence has to come down, a lot of things were done, 
that uh, that shouldn't have been done, and it has to be tore down to be to be put in spec. I give my end of my road a right away for a turnaround. I've done that in the beginning. I put a 40 feet cover. They come in, they pulled it out. My cover that I paid for put me a 20 foot in. I never gave them permission to do that. I never told nobody to do nothing. I come in, it's done. It's a private road. Uh, the servitude on the road, when Leo drove it up, it was 10 foot on one side for utilities, 10 foot on the other side. I don't know if it was for utilities or what, the 20 foot road. We don't have that. That's what we was told the parish couldn't take it over. I gave Jerry Savoy the whole list of the of every restrictions in there in the landowner. The land the basically the president of the of the road at that time was Leo Lambert. He reinforced gave that to Mr. Russian. Since then nothing's been done on that road. I have made hundreds of phone calls to different people. Some people can can afford to do that. This is a young community, a lot of young people on there. They just got kids. They can't come up with that kind of money. I mean, it's difficult to them. They was under the pressure and the road was there, you know? I mean, and, and maybe people should read the fine print. I don't know what all's there, but we, we all need help. I can't afford to do it. I started to go do it. I talked to Jerry about it. We had an estimate to do it. I was going to do the whole road, me and Miss Pat, and try to collect our money back. I was told that could be tied up by lawyers for 10 years in court before I ever got that. Can't do that. It's getting to the point where I can't get to my house. You know, I live in the back. And the worst part's up in the front. But with <coughs> parish trucks running up down that road to access that back ditch behind my house that really needs to be dug out, and I'm not letting them dig it out because they're using my road, they ought to compensate at least put rocks on the road now. They really need to. Uh, the second thing is uh, the landowners, we're trying to maintain it the best we can. Some people are just starting out young, got kids, everybody's been there. It's tough. Uh, the next thing is uh, Mr. Ronnie Hughes, I called him up and I said, Ronnie, I said, I don't understand. You know, I said, um, I, I, I swear and I mean it. I, I'm thinking about moving to Livingston. If you go to Livingston and East Baton Rouge Parish, they are taking in roads. They are making things happen. And I just don't see with the amount of money that's coming in through this, through this parish how we can't do that. I, ju I just don't see it. And, uh, and it's happening in Livingston Parish. I'd be glad to take anybody on any ride and go see. I asked Mr. Ryan to go personal with me. Didn't happen. Uh, let me see. He did come down the road to see what needs to be done. And at that time, we all pitched in a little bit, and some other people pitched in a few dollars I could afford, and we filled in some pretty big holes. We get, we're getting by towards the back. We got one lane that we can get in, and where the ditch was dug last week, that's going to fall in. We won't be able to get back there eventually. They put rocks down. We can't get in and out. And I, I guess what I'm asking is, this stuff's been going on for two years. We've looked at doing it ourselves, can't get it done. We talked to Jerry about uh, a program or something to possibly get it done, and we pay the parish back. We haven't gotten no words on that. I'm telling you, the end of this summer, there'll be no access to that road. And I'm telling you, somebody, tempers are flaring, somebody's going to get hurt. And I told Ronnie and I told Jerry, I, I, I hold everybody here accountable. If they can't help a taxpayer in person fix something like that, it's on you. And that's all I have to say, and I appreciate the help everybody's done. I know it's a lot of red tape to get things done and to make things happen. But we're begging for y'all's help, and we need it. That's all I have to say. No. Thank you. Thank you. I also have Pat Richardson that signed up for on a card. <clears throat> Welcome, Ms. Richardson. Thank you. I had spoke to Mr. Jerry several times prior to um, 2007 concerning this, and he gave me a breakdown. I'd spoke to Ms. Cheryl one night at home. Of course, I realized she doesn't represent us. I don't actually live down Spelman Lambert Road, but I do have property down Spelman Lambert Road, and I have been down it many, many times, and I have a very large vehicle, and it's really bad. And for the people who have small vehicles, I don't even know how they can get down it without tearing up the bottom of their vehicles. Uh, Mr. Jerry mentioned that we might be able to get the parish to um, get a bond and then assess the land.
landowners, we would be, you know, be happy to do that. But we need some help in the meantime before any of that is actually put into place. Um, I was told later by someone else that the parish would not take it over for the same reasons that Mr. Nelson gave. But if the parish is going to come onto the property to do other things for certain people, then perhaps they would consider at least putting us rocks. And all we're asking is that you consider to go ahead and assess the bond so that we can be, I mean, uh, borrow the money for the bond so that you can assess the property owners for it. Um, I don't know how long it takes. I understand it's a very lengthy process. But back when I talked to you um, in January, I think you were going to mention it to Mr. Malcolm Duga, and I haven't heard a word since. And I realize that's not the only thing y'all have to do, but you know, with campaigns and all coming up, we would appreciate any of y'all help. Thank you. Any questions from the panel up here? Todd. Yeah, Mr. Bob, give us your opinion from uh, coming from, a view coming from administration on this. I I it sounds believe like a you know a situation they definitely need some help. It, it really is. Uh, clearly, these two residents articulated the problem that you have on parish roads very clearly and I, I understand and sympathize with the frustration that they've had uh, in my mind parish roads are a problem for the very things that they said is that when they bought their property uh, if they were not one of the original property owners they really didn't realize that they were responsible for maintenance of the road Spillman Lambert Road is ex it's generally wide enough but it doesn't it doesn't have a very good surface on it it clearly needs a gravel surface the 24 homes I think on the road is uh, really uh, an issue with me because uh, a number of those individuals uh, really didn't realize that uh, what they were getting into and and that may be on some of these other roads too, the same situation. This is a, probably a really good one to talk about, but I guess m my, I have mixed emotions. On one hand, I, I think that yes, this road should be a parish road. Uh, on the other hand, I've, I'm weighing uh, what we'll talk about a little later, the uh, maintenance uh, and improvements necessary on roads that are currently parish roads. So. It's, it'd be really difficult for me to recommend to you that we fix and, and repair up to really good standards Spillman Lambert Road and not uh, make a repair on a current parish road. As a thought that you might want to consider and one that I guess I would recommend is that, that you take Spillman Lambert into the system with the provision and understanding that we would put gravel on the road, gravel it and maintain a good gravel surface on it for a period of years before it would ever be uh, eligible for uh, to be included as a, a blacktop road. In other words, uh, before we uh, uh, improved it to uh, an asphalt standard. I think that really that's what the residents are asking for now. They're they're not asking for uh, an improved road. They're asking for some help. Help. And this would give them that help, but at the same time, make a commitment to uh, to the residents along there that ultimately they would have a good road. Mr. Sawa. Spelman Lemon Road. Been dealing with it for quite some time. Spelman Lambert Road is a private road. Uh, back in 2000, uh, 1997, the, the council passed a resolution that we were not going to take any more roads into the system that did not meet our standard, which was a minimum right of way with two inches of asphalt, uh, however wide the road was. There was a provision in the resolution that was offered back in uh, 1997 seven that any road or any plat that was passed by the planning commission prior to 97 we would accept that road in when it came in and met some criteria those criteria were we would need a minimum of 40 foot right away and they had to have at least one house on it so we have out there today some some roads that have not even been constructed yet but because it passed 
it passed a plat and was signed by the planning commission prior to 1993 june 1993 we still have obligation to take those roads in there are some out there okay unfortunately spellman lambert road does not fall into that because uh this is a plat of spellman lambert road which was signed by the planning commission um on Yeah, 2000, uh, September of 2000. So it clearly, I was hoping that we could, we would find it and it would fit in that, but unfortunately it doesn't. Um, now, this came to surface again because residents of Spelman Lambert Road made contact with administration. Administration went and took a look at it and administration came to us and said, there are some roads out there that we may have to look at because we utilize those roads, those private roads to access our drainage or whatever other services that we offer. And they're right. We did use, the parish did use Spelman Lambert Road to enhance the drainage on Cypress Gold years ago. And we've also gone in there and, and for drainage purposes, cut a ditch and, and set culverts at greed. Now we have in the past, we did go back there and help them as far as putting gravel and it being legal because we were utilizing the, their private road. So we did. Uh, I know on one occasion we did put gravel in and grade it. Well, uh, we're in there now attempting to do work on the, on the west side. Um, and we do access or have access our drainage systems through Spelman Lambert Road. So I think that there is a legal avenue that we could take to improve Spelman Lambert Road to some degree. But the policy that administration's got is that they have to go and get uh, signatures from every landowner. Well, during all this time, uh, the residents was asking, is there any other alternative? My, uh, my alternative is that we could develop a road district. If we develop a road district, which means you have to get 51% of the residents that's inside the district to agree, then we could go to the bond and, and, and uh, engineer it, go out for bond and money and pave it and put the cost on the frontage, the f uh, footage, frontage of the property and let the owners do it. In the meantime, I was, I was, I was working on that, but then administration said, well, let's, let's see about there's some roads here that we, we need to take in. So I said, well, let's just go down this avenue here. Now that's where we're at. I mean, I, I was going down two roads trying to figure out the best way. The best way is for us to take it in, okay? Uh, and here we are tonight with a list of roads that can be taken in. It is legal for the council to accept roads into the parish, okay? Question is, do we want to take this set of uh, roads and accept them into the parish? It has been... Um, looks like it may have been 10 years since we have taken roads in and we we mentioned back then 10 years ago that as we could afford it we there's a possibility that we at some future time we would take additional roads in now financial situation we're in today we have to take a look at personally uh from coming from administration there's several roads on here that they feel like we need to do based on the fact that we use these these roads to access our uh, uh, services. So, uh, Bob, do you have, I, I wish we had a total so that we had a cost figure on what it would cost to uh, maintain these these additional roads right here in, in terms of gravel and uh, grading uh, um, so that we could have a feel for how much additional money it would cost. Yeah. I would be glad to uh, give you that. I, I did not do that on, on this list, uh, and, and one of the reasons that I didn't, and I want to make sure that you understand what I'm presenting to you here, this is not necessarily a recommendation that you take these roads in. What these are are uh, roads that we had previously had requests to take in, and we're giving you information about each one of them. And so uh, I think it's ultimately your decision as to whether or not you would take all of them in or none of them in or 
some of them in and uh, may not others. Uh, but I would be glad to give you a, a cost. Now, I do know there's one or two down here that, that we don't feel like there's any cost associated with them. Uh, uh, for example, Mallard Avenue uh, is currently a uh, very fairly high type concrete street. It has, uh, it essentially meets all the Perry standards, but it was never requested that we take that road in. It has no houses on it at this time, but it is divided into lots. Oh, I'm sorry, it's got one house on it, but it is divided into lots, and at some point in time, I think, I've, I've kind of looked at that as a uh, new subdivision, if you will. Just as a new subdivision develops a road by itself with no houses, as we take that road in, houses are developed. So that one kind of looks like that. Others uh, uh, may have some uh, uh, slightly different problems. Uh, uh, we've got one or two that the existing road falls outside the uh, portions of it, falls outside the platted servitude for the road, and, and we need to, we would need to work on that to resolve that with the residents before uh, we would just take that in. But Spillman Lambert, uh, as an example, it, it, the road is there, it's a fairly lengthy road, the roadbed is essentially correct, it's just got a, a really bad surface on it, and if it were surfaced and uh, ultimately overlaid, it'd be a nice parish road. Uh, and I, I, I don't want to speak against the provision, and I really appreciate the fact that you looked at the issue of bonding a road. Uh, my, my concern with that is that uh, that's usually a fairly lengthy process, and it ends up being, uh, uh, by the time you start putting in standards of where to build a road to, it gets excessively costly. Uh, a, a contracted road, uh, for a construction is much more costly than uh, the roads like on our road list or uh, add and surface. So you may want to give consideration to, to that also. And I, I'd, I'd, you're going to end up a situation where uh, resident A can afford $1,500 or whatever it might be on the frontage, but mm -hmm. resident B cannot. And then what happens there? Uh, does one pay the others and that sort of stuff? But if if we did go some route of uh, like adding a gravel surface on those that are necessary uh, to have a surface for a period of time uh, before you made any commitment for doing additional work such as asphalt, I, I think it would be appropriate. You still have the floor. Yeah, there's a couple of streets on here, like Shelley Street. Well, let's, let's go to Mallet Street. You know, like you said, Bob, yes, Mallet Street is the best road we've got in the parish, I believe. I, it's, it's very good. I was on it the other day, and I could not see any problems at all with yeah. it. Let's talk about Shelley Street and Tracy Street. Those two streets are in an existing subdivision. Those two, there are some issues on those two. But what, what the problem we've got is over time, we're run, running into a drainage problem, and because they're not in the system, we can't go and dig the ditches on off of Shelley and Tracy. Now, they're built to the same standard that the rest of the subdivision was built. For some reason, they just never did get it inspected or what there was, there was a glitch in it, but we really need to take it in. It's part of the existing subdivision. You can't tell any difference from width. You know, uh, I think it's been inspected by our departments and, and found that it was, had two inches of asphalt on it. So it looks like it meets our specifications. But that's just two of them on the list. Bob, you, you offer a good uh, alternative. On the the gravel roads. I'm going to I'm going to make offer a motion that we accept these roads off of this list into the system so that we can so that we can immediately start maintaining and improving these from a gravel 
and grading perspective. Uh, but we will have to hold off any further improvements for a period of 18 months. And then we can consider them. And I offer that in form of a motion. Are you talking about all of them? Too? All of them on the list. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There is, uh, there are some. I think we need to bring this back before the whole council. That uh, I'm sure there's some other roads that need to be added. I'm sorry, some other roads that need to be looked at before we accept these. Um, I, th I thought we were just going to more or less look at the uh, proposed uh, roads that you know DPW has here, but. Uh, I think it would be best we bring it back to all the council and and uh, make sure that they they good with this because this is private roads. Council Hernandez. I, I agree with you somewhat, Dempsey. But uh, these roads here, some old roads that needs to be moved on, especially Spelman Lambert. That's one that it's not my district. I get a lot of calls on it. I know a lot of people down that road. I've worked in that district for a long time, and uh, it is a, a bad issue over there. I think we need to move on some, but I don't think we need to move on all of them. And like Jerry said, Mallet Avenue, uh, you know, it's a fine road, but it's zero houses or one house on the road. And I don't know if you got to go by subdivision regulations when you build a subdivision on this road. They would have to follow the subdivision regulations if they put a subdivision on it, correct? Right. If uh, they a, a, a sewer system, if it's more than eight houses, they have to put a community system and. All that has to be approved through the Planning Commission, correct? Yes, that's to my understanding, that's correct. Okay. But as far as Spellman Lambert, I, I have no problem moving right away on it. Uh, it might, might point out that really majority of these were initiated by family petition request where there was a tract of ground that uh, was split into so many lots and then uh, ultimately was split again into more lots and uh, and I think one of the residents talked about uh, uh, methods of circumventing the subdivision regulations and while that might be possible and I, I would not know if that's the case in any of these, it, the end result is that that's essentially what you end up with is a subdivision on a private road and without the uh, amenities and the uh, infrastructure that a subdivision would, would get as it went through the Planning Commission. And uh, so uh, I, I think that's getting less and less each time. The Planning Commission, I've noticed, is denying uh, more and more family subdivisions, so I, I don't think this is an uh, increasing problem. I think it's actually a decreasing problem, and uh, ultimately I think we could uh, work our way through this. Councilman Sabo. Yeah, uh, comments made by Councilman Dempsey Lambert in terms of putting it off until the next month. I can appreciate that, but remember, we took this issue up last month, and last month we yield 30 days to go back because there were some council members that didn't have opportunity to put their, get their roads on the list. So we did yield 30 days already. Uh, I'm thinking the list has grown since the last time, so I thought, and I'm under the impression that everyone has had opportunity to put the particular road, if they had one that needed to be put on the list or felt needed to be put on the list, had, had it and has done it, or they have had opportunity to do it if they have it, uh, so that we could move forward. I have one question too, uh, Mr. Bob. You know, we kind of spoke just briefly earlier when you gave me the list. You said that this was a list that you compiled, but you really, uh, you you really wasn't approving the whole list to be taken in. So, if you could, you know, give us a heads up of what we could maybe recommend that be taken in tonight. There's no reason why we can't ever come back you know, and, and come back with another set of lists after we do it. And I do, I do think that there's one that they needed to add to the list that's not on the list, hasn't been investigated yet. We could also add that for you to look into tonight. So that's something to think about. I think he needs to finish giving us the report on the roads, and then he needs to tell us what his recommendations for each is. 
at this point in time. And then we can decide if we'll take his recommendation or what we're going to do about splitting up the list, taking the whole list. Uh, yes, I'd be glad to do that. If, if you will indulge me a little bit, uh, Ricky uh, is actually the uh, individual that inspected each of these roads. I was looking for someone who had knowledge of uh, road construction and, and would be consistent in evaluation so that different people did not look at different roads. So Ricky has looked at all of these and so with his assistance uh, we will go down through the list and, and kind of give you our recommendations or, or our thoughts, not necessarily our recommendations. I think the choice is yours as to which roads that you might take in. Uh, yeah, I'd like to go one, one, down the list one at a time. Well, if you look at Spelman Lambert, look at the plot. And I'll show you some things that you need to look at before you. The existing servitude on Spelman Road is 40 foot right away of passage. If you look on the plot, though, they got a driveway just to, to the east of that road. They got a 40 foot private servitude, but it goes to the center of the road, which means you only have 20 foot on Spelman Lambert because the lot comes to the center of the road. So there's some issues to be worked out before you can overlay any of these roads. Do y'all see what I'm talking about on the plat? Is there an issue getting the right of way, correct right of way from, we had not checked. <coughs> well it don't, I don't think it'd be an issue if the public's wanting to take it in, but I mean they got some things you need to do. I think Mr. Bob had a good recommendation to go ahead and gravel the road and keep it up, maintain it for a couple years. I mean, it's, but that's strictly up to y'all. Y'all decide what you want to do with it. So you look at the issues. We can go ahead and accept and take it in, realizing there's some issues that we could work out before we even come in and do a hard surface improvement. Yes. It would have to be resolved. Yeah, it would have to be resolved. Okay. Yeah. That would be our recommendation. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, the second one on this is uh, Thomas C. Road. If you look at the plat on that one, here's some issues with that one that we found. The plat shows three different servitudes along the road. The first servitude on the entrance of the road, which is already accepted by the parish, has a 30-foot passage of right-of-way. Then you get to a 40-foot passage of right-of-way on another portion that has been accepted into the parish. At the very back, you only have a 20-foot passage of right-of-way. So those are the some issues that we can maintain the, the gravel part just like we do with Spelman Lambert for several years. See if we can work out the issues as far as the servitude on the back before we take them in. But like I said, that's ultimately y'all decision. But if you look at the plot, you'll see three different servitudes. I have it colored in different colors. And that's what the that's some of the problems on that road. They don't they got drainage problems along the road. Y'all see that on that plat? Mm -hmm. Again, on something like that one, that might be uh, proper to make a condition on that road that, uh, in other words, that we get uh, adequate servitude dedicated to the parish. Uh, or it, it would not come into the system. Uh, we, we definitely need more than the 20 foot, that section of 20 foot servitude. We really need 40 foot. And uh, so if we could get the other 20 foot of uh, servitude, uh, then I think it would be appropriate to, to get uh, it consider now. that one. But it, it almost has to be a condition, if you will. Um, we'll take it in, can provided that right. you get you get the additional servitude. Well, that's Thomas C. Road extension that we're talking about, which is the gravel. The other two portions of that road have been taken into the system. The road surface at this moment, the gravel port is 13 foot. Yeah. That's actually the third item on the on the list. The second item, which is Thomas C. Road, that was already that was or, that's already a parish road. The paid yeah. Point. With two different servitudes, a 30 and a 40. Right, we already, that's we already, ours. We already that's have already that. ours. Thomas C. showed up on the list, but once we done the investigation, Thomas C. Road 
was already taken in. The only port portion that wasn't taken in was the gravel part. So that's what the report is on. The uh, and so far as what we're looking at taking in is only 20 foot. Right. Yeah, well, that, that's correct. Yes, we sir. need a minimum of 40 feet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that would be a recommendation. Okay, the third one over this is uh fourth one I guess you'd let's say yeah. is main room. The plat that was at the courthouse for that room, it was filed at the courthouse, but it's never been signed by the planning commission. Uh let me get to some notes. Road has a twelve foot gravel gravel surface. They have a very well-defined ditch on the right side of the road, <coughs> leaving George Ray heading to the back. A small swell on the front. Uh, but when you get to the back portion of the road, there's no swell at all for over 600 feet of that road. <coughs> you got 16 foot from top bank of swell to the, on the left side of the road to the top bank of the ditch on the right side of the road. There's three mobile homes on the, on the road. And there's only one that looks to be occupied. The other two are sitting there vacant. This particular road has significant numbers of problems. Uh, the lack of a plat that's been filed uh, would indicate actually the road is not a, a common access that you normally would think of. In addition to that, it's extremely narrow and there's uh, uh, a limited number of uh, houses or trailers on the road and it would be one that at this point in time I would recommend that we not take in. Dear Lane. Next one we'll go to Deer Lane. Deer Lane is at the back of uh, Isaac V Law extension. It has a 15-foot road surface that is limestone. It's 25 feet from top bank of ditch to top bank of ditch. The length is 666 feet. The road has no dead end barricades at the T-turn around. You see, there is some drainage problems towards the back of the road because they got some driveways that were put in without culverts at the very back of the road. Uh, the road does have a 40-foot. Uh, private servitude of passage on it. It's fairly good shape too. Yeah. This is one that appears to me to be uh, very logical to uh, maintain as a gravel surface for a period of time and yeah. then uh, ultimately make improvements to it. So I would recommend that it be seriously considered to be taken in. <coughs> Next one on the list is Isaac B. Roy Extension. It's That's the one a road surface of 16 feet of limestone. They have no roadside ditches along that road. The road length is only 200 feet. What it was is a Isaac B. Law was accepted into the parish system, then they added 200 feet to cut another lane to the left to sell other lots, which that was done, and it turned into Deer Lane when it got to the dead end. It has a 40-foot private servitude of passage. The road's in fairly good shape, but you don't have no, no swells and no kind of drainage ditches along that, that road at all. Again, that, in my mind, is very similar to Deer Lane, that uh, I would think that uh, maintaining it as an adequate surface, provide roadside drainage, uh, would be suitable for a, a period of time for those residents, and then uh, go ahead and accept it in. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Any questions? Or yeah, just a question. How far are you uh, from uh, Henderson Bayou? Right there on top of it. You had, yeah, would it be the point. dead end? Mm -hmm. Deer Lane, uh, Henderson Bayou may be three, 400 feet to the right of it. So you're right fairly close? At the end of it. Okay. Right. Thank you. Spanish Lane Extension. If you look at the plot, they... Well, first, let me go through it. It's got a 10-foot limestone surface. 
Uh, the length is seven. I'm sorry, Mr. Dillman, which one do you own? It's on Ash. Ash. Okay. Right. You have a 10 foot limestone surface. The length is 730 feet from the end of blacktop to the end of the limestone. The plat shows a 40 foot servitude of passage. If you note in the picture on the plat, there is an existing fence that comes. They have the 40 foot servitude, but when you get to the back of the blacktop, it actually dog legs to your right. If you look on the 40 foot servitude on the plat, it shows they got a fence with a tree line that basically takes up about half of the, the servitude. It don't take up half the road. So those are some issues if you was to take this in, you'd have to go and relocate the fence, take the tree line down. The servitude is ours. I mean, we could actually do that. But I just want you to note it. It's on the plat. It's been filed. It's, it's that y'all need yeah. to look at. This is one that I think has significant problems with the with the uh, uh, servitude there, the legal aspect of it uh, really looks good when you look at it on the plat. When you look at it on the ground, uh, essentially the tree line is in the middle of the servitude, so ultimately those the trees need to come down and uh, the road constructed a proper width, and, and uh, there's significant length of this that is not, would not be a proper width, so this is one that I guess I would have some concern about and some questions about as to whether or not it ought to be brought into the system at this time. Mr. Bob, are uh, any of the residents requesting that we take this one in? It's my understanding that yeah. all of yeah. these were generated by request. By request? Residents. Yes, ma'am. I, I was just wondering, since you said you were going to have to take the, you know, possibly the tree line down there, you know, I was just wondering, you know, if they had wanted this and would they be willing for that to happen? I, well, the right of way was given by someone other than the people that's living on the road. I think he may be kin to him. You know, it's T. Hank, uh, Tom Play. He actually gave up some of his pasture to, to make the road width wide enough. But he's, the fence has never been relocated because the parish never done nothing. There's no ditch cut to the left side in the, in the servitude to the left of the road. They got a small swell ditch to the right. I mean, the man gave it up in good faith for the, to, to widen the road. It's just nothing hasn't been done. I mean, okay. it's basically a driveway going to houses right now. I just want to make sure we didn't have any issues to address with that. I don't think it'd be a problem because the servitude's there. It's okay. just that it needs to be relocated. Anybody else have any questions on that one? And what do you recommend on that one? I would recommend that due to the significant problems that the tree line presents that uh, we would not take it in at this time. I, I think this is one that I guess I'd like to talk to the residents in uh, greater detail. And, and bring to, it back. And to bring it back at some point in time. Okay, the next one is monocellar extension. On cell extension, for the first 760 feet is concrete with an 18 foot surface. The concrete was poured in two different phases. It was originally poured as a 16 foot surface, then later someone come back and added a two feet extension onto that road. Uh, the second 370 feet of the road has a 16 foot limestone surface. The plat shows a 60 foot servitude of passage. It is not clear. It has many nice trees and the people keep it maintained. So that may be an issue about going to take down trees and finish this road out. That would be something DPW would have to look at. There's a roadside ditch to the right of the roadway going in on portions of the roadway. Some people have their lawns coming all the way to the road with no ditch at all. On the left side, you have no defined ditch. Some portions of it have no defined ditch. Uh, you have three failures in that concrete road on that that particular uh, road that need to be addressed. We note that there are eight homes on this road. Um, I'm not overly concerned about the concrete street with the added two foot. It's it's a uh, little unusual, but at the same time. It's obvious that uh, somebody came back and tried to 
upgrade the street surface so that the parish might take it in. The failures kind of concern me because I'm not sure just how good the quality of the concrete street is at this point. Uh, it might be one that uh, we need to look at in more detail and, and come back to you and give you a, a more solid recommendation. I guess I'm, I'm kind of up in the air on this one. Look at the plan, it shows it straight, it kind of winds. It don't it ain't actually straight because of the trees. You might say people maintain it the whole road. Uh, the next one on the list is Shelby Street. The only, like Jerry said, the road is nice. There's no doubt it's got two inches of asphalt. The length of it is 750 feet. There's no dead end barricades, which is required in a subdivision. When you build it, that's part of what you have to do. You have to put dead end barricades up. Uh, they have some information in here about the DA getting involved with this road because it was built without inspection from the parish. And as of this date, none of the requests made by the DA's office have been roads are in pretty fine shape, I'll tell you that. Man. So basically, I think Mr. Bob had in mind recommending they bond the road since all subdivision developments have to bond their road. If you consider a new subdivision that comes in, one of the things that we require in addition to constructing the roads to a parish standard, we also require that the developer put up a bond that assures that uh, the quality of construction was there and over and we go back and look at that uh, usually in a year later uh, to look at that again to see if any of it has failed if it's failed then we require that they correct it or else we will take the bond and and uh, use the bond and make the repairs this kind of in my mind fits in that category I, I guess I'd like to see the uh, uh, developer uh, is this a single property owner and it's a developer we have a developer on this one and I guess I'd like to see assurances of a uh, at least a one-year bond on this street and then take it in like it was a normal subdivision street because it looks good it really does it looks like a good street and uh, appears like the quality it just was not inspected and uh, um, so I think if we go forward at this point, uh, it'd be appropriate to ask for the bond. So your recommendation is to go ahead and accept it in if yes. we get a one-year yes, security bond. Yes, sir. That's, oh, that's both this bond. one and Tracy. Both of them are the same. Okay. Shelly and, Shelly and Tracy together. Same. This one looks to me like a driveway. I mean, I, when I saw it, that's really what I thought that it was, that it's a driveway of significant length down to one house. And I guess I feel a little uncomfortable taking in uh, a road that is uh, really only 12 foot wide and what I would consider to be a driveway. So I would recommend that we not take this one in. <coughs> Concrete, it's open ditch with it, the surface of the road is 20 feet wide. It's 50 foot from center ditch to center ditch. We do have 60 feet of right of way on this road. Uh, 100 feet of this road was accepted September 4th, 1997, because of one house that's on it. 
the, the road uh, actually was constructed probably a little bit stringent, more stringent than some of our subdivision road. I mean, we looked at all of it. We got records showing that it was, it's got six inches of limestone base. It has a six inch ass, uh, concrete surface. Uh, it also has wire in it that a lot of our roads don't have in. So this road was in pretty good shape when we looked at it. This is one that I talked earlier about, no houses on it, but this this looks like a, uh, a uh, if you will, a new subdivision type road. New road, looks good. Uh, no houses at this time. This is one that I would recommend that we take in, but we also would ask for a bond on it for at least a uh, one year bond. And let's treat it just like it were a new subdivision. And after one year, uh, if there's no problems with it, uh, you know, we would release the bond to the developer. Anybody have any questions on any of this support? We got Jackson Oaks uh, Road Extension. Jackson Oak Road Extension. First of all, Jackson Oak was denied, and I, we don't have nothing in the package on Jackson Oak's extension because nothing has ever been done. There's no, I mean, you go look, the, when you get to the, where Jackson Oaks asphalt ends, kind of looking out in a pasture, there's no defined road beds, no ditches. I mean, it just runs across an open field. But I mean. This is one that I don't think that uh, it'd be appropriate for us to take in for just one house that, that is a uh, very undefined uh, road, so I would recommend that we not take it in. Next one is Dan Dixon. Has a 12-foot uh, surface, 30-foot from center of the swell on one side of the road to 30-foot on the other side of the center of the swell. 650 feet long. The right of way on that road on the plot shows 30 foot. Uh, it has a 50 foot all purpose private servitude. This road runs a little bit further than what it's showing on, on in the picture. It runs, it runs out, kind of opens up into a, a field too. In other words, you see it on the plat. I mean, on the picture, it turns in a residence that's being built on the right, but it actually goes to the wood line. This What's particular road has four houses on it. Fairly narrow, 12 foot, 30 foot servitude. Um, I'm pretty concerned about it because it just didn't look like it's approaching the standard that we need at this time. It may be one that I'd like to ask you to let me look at in more detail, possibly talk to the residents and bring it back to you for a recommendation. <coughs> The uh, last road is uh, Big Easy. Big Easy. Uh, Big Easy is a 20-foot surface. Uh, at, at the length of it is 470 feet. The right-of-way is 60. It shows 40 on your front page, but I think uh, that's wrong. It's 60-foot servitude of passage on the road. This road was constructed a little bit more stringent than our, <coughs> our standards. Uh, the road's in very good shape. It even has a radius turn at the end of the road. Uh, it's our recommendation that we would just take this one in as it exists. We do have one more that's not on the list that um, Mr. Thomas uh, Pierce reminded me of that I really need to look at and come back to you on, but it's Tammy Road in the Perryville area. I'd, I'd like to uh, have that before you and uh, 
come back to you with some uh, additional consideration recommendations on that road. We need to look at it. Mr. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Mr. Bob, I'd like you to also relook at uh, Jackson Oaks Drive. This is a similar set up and uh, just compare both of them and, and get all the information on them. Okay, we will. Thank you. Councilman Samuel. Yes, Mr. Bob, would you please look at uh, Calton Place? Calton Place is a uh, private road. Um, it was in existence prior to 93. Um, I would like to add that to it. Rather than it go through the planning commission process, since if, if we're going to take some in, uh, and it's, it fits the criteria that was set before the council in 97, rather than go through the process and make it to the council, I, I would like for it to be placed on this list pending uh, uh, verification that it was signed by the planning commission prior to 83. Okay, be glad to look at that. Talked in place. Thank you. Okay, uh, one of the wishes of this board, we have uh, eight that they have approved uh, for taking in. Three have conditions. We've passed on a couple and we have some that we've said no on and y'all have recommended a couple for him to look over. So what what motion are we going to entertain tonight to deal with this? Ms. Bonner. Excuse me. Councilman Hill and yeah, uh, Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. And, uh, uh, I, I turned in a public comment card on the current item. Uh, I just wanted to make a comment on the private roads. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, Ricky Darman and Mr. Bob if they would take a look at uh, Floyd Webb Road off of Jefferson. Uh, uh, Ricky's unsure if that's a private road or a parish road, but it's a it's a gravel road at this time. We got some really nice houses back there. It's a little short subdivision, and I'd, I'd appreciate it if uh, maybe DPW would go take a look at that one and bring that information back. Well, I, I don't know if you didn't get my my slip, but uh, current I agenda. Did, but we had so many of them, and right. we really just kind of dealing with this. Right. So, okay. okay, well, I appreciate it. I, no I apologize problem. for, you know, just for objection. Okay. Thank you. Councilman Lambert. Yeah. Todd. I go ahead and make the motion that we send it to the full council, the eight that we approve, some with conditions, some without, and uh, go to the full council with it. Okay. Senator, uh, we have a motion in a second, and do we have any objections? There are none. You can go to the full council at the next council meeting. And Mr. Bob, you can continue to work with the list and, and, and add some if people want to add to them and then come back at another meeting and bring us an update on that. I'd be glad We'd to. We'd appreciate it. Thank you for your indulgence in going through this rather tedious process of looking at each one of them. But I, I think that's only the fair way to give good consideration to each one of them. I, I want to thank you and Mr. DeOrman. This is a very, very fine package and a very, very fine way of bringing information to us that, that enable us to make good decisions. Councilman Savoy. Yeah, uh, I want to commend you for the job y'all done. Uh, made it very clean and clear and easy for us to follow through and make some decisions here. One thing I would like for us to do is let's not confuse the list that we have tonight and we've approved to move forward with the ones that make additional ones. And I'm talking about Tammy Road and Calton Place. That's and correct. And Mr. Hillensbeck just mentioned. Yes. Let's let's try to keep them separate so that we don't get confused at, we, at the council. We will proceed to the council with those that you have approved, and we will come back to you with this second list of ones that we need to look at to, and uh, get additional information on. Th so that's fine. Uh, Thank you. And I and I might point out that, and I really appreciate the fact that you commented on the quality of the work, but I didn't do it. Ricky did it, and so it's oh, Ricky. Oh, he's the one that done it? Oh, he well, did well, it. Great job, Ricky. <laughs> so he did a great job. <laughs> yeah, and, and Ricky made a good point, though. If the council or council members uh, have a road, just like we've added one or two here, if if we come back with a second list, it, it sure wouldn't hurt us to look at a few more if, if they thought that uh, they might fit the criteria. Thank you so much. Okay, the next item on the agenda is uh, C-1. 
Renewal of unitary plan of operation for selection of parish roads for new construction and maintenance for Ascension Parish government. Madam Chair, can I ask a question, please? It's very difficult to hear back here. Could you just clarify The decision uh, was made that it would be accepted into the parish. There's eight of them that are accepted, and I think that they're going to initially uh, put some gravel and stuff until they can get further information. They're going to get it. Hmm. Is that correct? No. This this is a committee. The committee made a recommendation based on administration to move forward with accepting eight of these roads, Film and Laminate Road being one of them. This committee moves it to the full council for consideration which will be at the next council meeting. So we're looking at another, what, 30 days? No, ma'am, we have a meeting in two weeks. In two weeks? It would be, it would be on the agenda in two weeks for consideration. Here, it's not approved right now? It, it yeah, we, we, it's going in the direction that you want it to go in, Nelson, but it does have to go before the full council for approval. Okay, it passed this committee, the transportation committee, it moves to the full council for consideration. Okay. Thank you for coming. <laughs> okay. I, uh, see. The item number uh, uh, C, the renewal of a unitary plan, each parish <laughs> is required to develop a plan of road improvements in, in their parish. And I, I didn't discover this until uh, Bill Rue, Mr. Rue brought it to my attention. Uh, just recently, but essentially uh, uh, it, it closes in, in 2006, and so we need really to renew this. What this does is to uh, meet uh, state requirements, and it's essentially a method to say how we are going to prioritize our roads for improvements. And we're essentially following that, and this is a continuation of past, uh, in fact, it's identical to what we did in the, in the past. It's a, a continuation to the year 2010. Councilman Samoa. And this is something that we have to do, otherwise we will put the parish in jeopardy of losing state funds. I make the motion that we renew second. the unitary plan. Well, I have a motion and a second to renew uh, the unitary plan. Any objections? There are no objections. That can go to the full council. Jerry. Todd. Todd. Jerry made a motion. Jerry made the motion. Todd made the second. Item number D, update on road Roddy Road Bridge replacement at Bird Allen and Shadow Creek. If it's acceptable to the committee, I would like for Mr. Sheehan to address this issue. Uh, president of GSA uh, Consulting Engineers who has the contract for, for making this improvement. And I think he probably is best to give you the update on the, on the project. Welcome, Mr. Shaheen. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, Thank you, Madam Chairman. As you may recall, the, uh, there are two bridges on Roddy Road, uh, one over Bird Allen at Bird Allen Ditch and the other at Shadow Creek that we have discussed uh, replacing. Uh, back some time ago, I guess back in the fall of 2006, we presented to you a, uh, a recommendation and cost estimate for the replacement of those two timber bridges with new bridges. At that time, uh, it had been reported to us by the uh, Public Works Department that 
water over top the roadway at both of those locations at various times during various rainfall events. Based on the hydraulic uh, effort that we put forth, we could not substantiate water ever overtopping those roads from a modeling standpoint. I'm not saying that it doesn't actually doesn't actually overtop the road at various times. Uh, we came back to the back in November of 06 and asked the board to allow us to look into, look further into that situation to determine or to substantiate what exactly was causing the problem. In our further investigation, what we found was that there was about a mile of waterway from Roddy Road uh, along this canal which ties into Black Bayou. And as you walk that bayou and you look at that, that canal, there are numerous obstructions and deficiencies in the canal or the channel that we felt like were causing the problem with those two locations. Uh, we asked the board at that time to allow us to do additional surveying uh, and to do the additional modeling and to come back to you with a final recommendation uh, and also looking at various alternatives uh, for those two locations. What you have tonight, uh, that, by the way, our task order was approved in February of this year, and uh, we had a projected delivery date of our findings by June 1st of this year, 2007. What you have in front of you is a result of that effort. And what we're here tonight to recommend to you, uh, we've got two alternatives for each location. The first location at Shadow Creek, which is the larger, I'm sorry, which is the smaller of the two channels uh, locations, we're recommending uh, replacing that existing single span timber bridge with a three span concrete bridge uh, and the cost of that being $306,000 and that's contract installation cost. The alternative to that is to replace that existing timber bridge with four 10 by 4 reinforced concrete boxes and the installation cost of that alternative is $253,000. The second location that we looked at was the Burt Allen Ditch which is the larger of the two. Uh, the Actually the Shadow Creek Canal actually ties into what we call what, what you all refer to as the Burt Allen Ditch but it ties into the Burt Allen Ditch to the west of Roddy Road. That location currently is a two-span timber bridge and we're recommending that it be replaced also with a three-span uh, concrete bridge, 40-foot width again, uh, and that total cost is $337,000. The alternative to the concrete bridge is replacing that bridge, existing timber bridge, with three 10 by 7 reinforced concrete boxes and the total cost for that is $247,000. Um, if you notice the widths of the bridge that we're proposing are 40 feet. Uh, back in, in November of, uh, I'm sorry, in uh, fall of, of 2006, we presented at that time the alternatives that we presented to you was building a typical a standard 28 foot wide bridge which is typically constructed on two lane roadways and we presented to you at that time uh, an alternative bridge which was 40 foot wide which would allow you to expand Roddy Road from a two lane roadway uh, eventually if you wanted to add a turn lane a single uh, a center turn lane that 40-foot bridge would allow you to do that. So that's why we're proposing, if you look at that 40-foot uh, width, it's not a, not typically what you would find around Ascension Parish, but at that time we offered it as an alternative to the parish and you felt like uh, that uh, that would be something that the parish would want to consider. So we stand before you tonight. Uh, those are the alternatives that we've recommended. Both will work uh, very well uh, under one condition is that we make channel improvements downstream of this location uh, to eliminate the deficiencies that exist in the downstream reach of this channel from Roddy Road going west.
to Black Bayou. Councilman Todd Raymond. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Glenn. Yes. Time frame on the two options, alternates. Uh, we was trying to get this done during the summer months while school Correct. was out. Uh, what are we looking at as far as having to get these boxes built compared to putting the bridges in? All right. Uh, Mr. Bob Turner and I discussed that. The, of course, the boxes go in uh, much quicker than the construction of a bridge. Uh, I spoke with Mr. Bill Chambers uh, yesterday on both of these locations, uh, and he estimated the time of construction. He has just finished building a three-span bridge very similar to this, and that's where a lot of these cost, this cost data comes from on these bridges is from Mr. Chambers. Uh, he just finished building a three-span bridge in Hammond, and it took him seven weeks to construct them. So uh, the, the, the construction time, uh, you know, seven to ten weeks, but the, the, if, if you have to advertise these things for bid, of course, you've got to follow the state bid laws, which require you to advertise them for a period of no less than 25 days. Uh, it requires you to receive bids, and then you've got to award the contracts, and then you've got probably uh, three to five weeks of getting contract documents and bonds and insurance papers. So you're looking at optimistically to advertise these pro these pro either way these projects for bid and getting on getting them under construction. Talking about beginning constructing optimistically sometime in August. Mm -hmm. The there was an alternative that Bob and I talked about, and that was the possibility of maybe the parish constructing the boxes. Uh, and I'm not sure, uh, Councilman Barriga, when I mentioned, uh, discussed it with him earlier tonight, uh, he raised a, a, an interesting, a valid question, and that is, you know, can we, uh, can we in fact build that bridge? And I would have to defer that, or the parish can build the bridge or the culverts. I would have to defer that to your legal counsel. Mm -hmm. uh, just the material cost alone, uh, and, I, and I presented this to Bob also, uh, just the material cost alone on each of these bridges, one is 104000 the other is 106000 So I'm not sure what the legal ramifications are. Can we, can the parish build these bridges or build these, install these culverts, uh, you know, outside of, outside of a bidding competitive bidding process and I don't know if any Bob has looked into that and has anything to offer there I really haven't looked into that and my my first reaction is that I would not see a uh, problem with the parish uh, doing an in-house project that of uh, this size uh, there would be a concern that that our expertise required would not quite be up to this standard. In other words, we're really good at what we do. Once we get out of the what we do into something that's a little bit new, I get a little nervous because we're not as good as a, a contractor that does this for a living. But uh, I, I'd be glad to check with the legal department to see if there would be a prohibition against it. Um, the only the only concern that I would have is that. When we would, if we were to try to tackle precast box of this size in house, we're going to have to devote a significant portion of our efforts to to this, which means that we're going to take away an awful lot of uh, things that we do for the other areas of the parish, uh, uh, and so that that'd be a concern. We're, we'd have to devote significant manpower. There's significant excavation of the. Uh, uh, channel itself in order to uh, get the proper width of the channel both upstream and downstream to uh, to match this so there there's uh, it's a significant construction project councilman Samoa. yeah I'd like to hear from my consultant engineers as far as the difference between a kind of the bridge and the box what's what's the better one from a flow perspective I mean, I'm thinking of the drainage part of it now. Um, either one will work sufficiently. I mean, I this I said I, I received this tonight. Um, I'd like to check on. I guess one of my questions is what this is undeveloped land. 
majority of the flood plain that's coming in this is it going to develop is it yes it will develop so i would assume that they did the hydraulics based on more than just a past using a coefficients different than just pasture land that they put in the future development to in order to size these structures and i'd like to look at the calculations and all and you know if everything's equal the two structures work about the same now there's perception people some people are going to perceive a bridge as being able to carry more water than the, these large boxes cover because these are 10 foot wide you got four 10 foot wide by four foot high box coverts it's it's a fairly large structure right, from a from a maintenance standpoint bob you may need to chime in on yeah. this from a maintenance standpoint are we going to have more problems with box covers versus a bridge as far as debris stacking up each individual channel tends to be unique on the amount of debris that comes down the channel uh, anytime that you've got a uh, a box culvert i think you're susceptible to have debris collect on it that would require periodically cleaning it that's generally not that difficult to do uh, uh, the only the only concern that I would have is that it debris seems to collect at the worst possible times. Uh, you know, you're in the midst of the storm, and uh, there's uh, a tree that went down and went across the end of your culvert that really creates a major problem for you. Uh, it would probably be the same on the bridge structure, though, if you had a, a bridge. Prob a bridge should pass a little bit more to breathe in a culvert though well yeah. from our you know from my perspective the culverts is more attractive they're cheaper and they're faster to install right but glenn whenever you've done your analysis how much room did they have as far as your flow as, as far as undeveloped do you know you understand what i'm saying do we have room to develop capacity? yes uh if you what we did in our analysis uh jerry was if you and in that in the little report uh i think it identifies uh for instance i'm looking at the first one shadow creek it has about 289 acres of drainage area right now it's primarily undeveloped but what we did in our analysis is we of course we don't go in and assume that that entire 289 acres is going to develop with commercial development i mean we factor in some growth uh primarily uh probably uh primarily residential probably a small percentage of commercial and then we run the hydraulics based on that the hydraulic analysis based on that second point i want to make there is that when we when we look at typically what you would do uh in designing the, in designing drainage facilities is you probably look at a 10-year storm on all the cross drains we we followed what dotd requires and that is we use it what we call a 25-year storm recurrence in that drainage basin to develop the hydraulics for sizing that structure. Um, so we've taken that into consideration in our analysis. We, uh, we're very confident that the two structures that we've proposed to you will work, uh, will work well. And there's pros and cons either way. Obviously a bridge, and as Kent and I think Bob has alluded to, the perception that there are two small bridges there now. Uh, originally, we proposed a bridge there. Uh, and, and the basic concept that we followed was a concept that the parish uh, instituted a long time ago, and that is if there was a bridge there, we wanted to replace it with a bridge to avoid the public perception that we were doing something less than what was there before. Uh, and it, these are not, although they appear to be large drainage areas, they're really not. One is 289 acres, one is 564 acres. So, uh, you know, although you know fairly sizable, they're not uh, they're not significant in terms of whether one one structure works better than the other. I will say this about a bridge. I mean, a bridge obviously you've got a lot more opening under the bridge than you will uh, than probably have with a, with a box culvert. That's that's the advantage of a bridge. The disadvantage of a bridge is if you ever decide to make significant improvements along. Roddy Road, then of course you're limited by the width of the bridge without really significant construction cost to modify it. Whereas with a box culvert, you remove the head walls and you extend the boxes. 
uh, and allowing the road to remain open while you making those improvements. So there's some advantages and disadvantages of either way. Boxes are less expensive. Uh, are they considerably less expensive? Well, you can look at the cost. I mean, they're one hundred and forty-three thousand. Yeah. Uh, in the overall scheme of things, is that enough? Is that enough to uh, justify one or the other? Uh, second thing is two. Two things, uh, Bob. What's your recommendation? Would your recommendation be to go with either one, or or send it to URS and let them review it? Uh, since we haven't had a chance to review it, I mean, what what do you think? Personally, I would like to see us send it to URS. There are project managers on projects like this, and let them uh, have their people look at it and come back with a recommendation. From an engineering standpoint, a box or a bridge, in my mind, is essentially the same. So I would look at the economic cost and, and generally go with that. But I would like URS to, to look at it. Uh, Madam Chair? I, I have someone in the audience that wants to speak right now, Mr. Mr. Baraga, Councilman Baraga. This is in his district and would like to comment. URS is looking at it right now. Yeah. <laughs> You're up. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. I was just talking to uh, URS, Mr. Ken Israel. And I asked that y'all go ahead and forward it to the council. He says he can have his review and recommendation. That was going to be my question. For two weeks by the next council Motion meeting. Motion to forward it to a second. full council. Pending, 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 pending URS's, URS's uh, review uh, and recommendation. I would, I would like to add uh, Bird Allen site being the first set of boxes to be installed uh, uh, due to the school. And we were. Uh, we, need, we really need to get that. I think it's in worse shape, also. Yes, yeah, we really bad need shape. to. We need and to really go ahead with the Bird Island site first. And what are we recommending to the full council that we we will coverage. we will uh, it, we're passing from this council. There's two recommendations here, and we haven't decided which one we want. We want URS to review. So, are, is our motion going to be? that we're going to back the uh, the recommendations of URS? I mean, I want to clarify what we sent into the council. Our recommendation is to move it toward the full council for consideration after URS uh, reviews it and gives recommendation. Got the motion? You made the motion or Todd? I Todd made the motion. No, Jerry, Jerry seconded it. There are no objections. Uh, we did request that if it was approved, that that when it goes forward, that they would start with Bird Allen. <coughs> Thank you. Is that good? Thank you, Mr. Baraka. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Shaheen. Mr. Bob, okay, we have uh, item E. Yes, what this next item is, is the, I wanted to give you an update. As you see, I didn't have any handouts for you, but I wanted to give you an update on the status of the uh, contract between the state and the parish for the parish to mow state right away. That's a getting to be a, a big issue. As you may recall, the parish did have a contract on with the state to mow a significant uh, amount of state right away in the parish. This was this is a common practice uh, with the state and other parishes that we're not the only one that did this. The uh, state a couple of years ago did not renew this contract, so we went through all of last year and and all through this year so far with no contract uh, with the state to mow, and our citizens rightfully so are becoming concerned about the lack of mowing on state right away the state has done some mowing uh, primarily on airline which is a, a great help but there's other state roads in the parish that have not received any mowing we felt so concerned about this that we have began mowing areas that uh, are in sight lines where you pull up to an intersection you can't see oncoming traffic because the grass and the brush are, are so high. So we've 
taking it on without a contract to go ahead and, and mow those areas for safety reasons. Uh, I've been calling the state and talking to them about this contract and they have just as of last week have assured me that we will have a contract uh, presented to us that I can bring to you hopefully at the next meeting. They, they tell me it, it should be, uh, they'd like it to go into effect the 1st of July. And uh, it, it represents a, a, a modest increase on what they were uh, paying in, uh, before. We had done some analysis of the contract, what it cost us to mow versus what they were paying. And essentially, it was costing us almost twice as much as uh, the state was paying for it. But again, I feel that it's appropriate that we would continue to enter into a contract and and not uh, uh, avoid that because of the service that it offers to our residents. So uh, it's, uh, I, I hopefully will be coming back to you at the next meeting with a contract for you to look at and then move to the parish uh, council. But I did want to tell you that in the meantime, we are mowing some areas of the state now without a contract. Do we have any questions? One question, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Mr. As soon as, uh, Bob, as soon as this contract is signed, I think it would be in our best interest to double up on the spraying because we're going to lose some equipment with some of the stuff that we're going to have to cut. Yes. So if we can get some of it sprayed and knocked down, it would, I think it's going to help us in the long run. Yeah, we're, uh, we're increasing our training and uh, knowledge on our spraying operation too. We're making an effort in that area because uh, we, we just cannot continue to mow everything. We've got to do a combination of mowing and spraying, and we will do that. Anybody else? Top. Yeah, Mr. Bob, I, I was under understanding that the manpower wouldn't, you know, we're going to have to beef up the manpower in order to get on these state highways? We're currently two mowers down from what we were before the drainage and uh, public works split. Uh, we're proposing a uh, additional mower in the uh, in the upcoming budget, and so I'm hoping to rectify that. But mm. uh, I, I guess I feel like yes, I could use more mowers, but at the same token, I think that we uh, have s enough to make a, a strong effort, and and we'll address the problem. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bob. Okay, we have n item number F. I do have someone that wanted to speak on item number F, Mr. Phil Garrett. Councilwoman and members. Um, I have, uh, I was kind of surprised that this was uh, on the agenda. I had not heard anything about it. And uh, I'm concerned uh, because presently my firm, Pelican Land Service, is under contract for all of the road widening projects that we, that we have. Some of them, many of them have been held up for reason, one reason or another, waiting for um, all of our fast track portions have been completed and uh, many of our projects were completed. We did fast track the whole way even though it was, they weren't eligible. And uh, we have uh, been expecting to start back. I have a, an agreement from the past uh, public works director from September, a written agreement uh, of them sending plans and so forth to me because I have to, uh, I've got people furloughed and so forth like that so we can finish these. Many of them are basically finished, but we just have to have, have the approval to go forward with them. And uh, I think it's premature, you know, to, to hire uh, some additional uh, right-of-way agents when there's not when we're sitting here holding you know and if you go have them do some of the work that was assigned to us you'll be in effect paying doubly for it and I don't think that that would be in the parish's uh, best interest um, I do know each of these people and uh, I have nothing they had to say about him, Mr. Uh, Jim Lipscomb is a, an appraiser from Zachary, but we already have a very good appraiser in Marcel uh, Anglot. Uh, 
and Jim has done some of the second appraisals along with uh, CJ Roy, LJ Roy rather, and um, the 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 other members, a couple, two of the three of them are experienced somewhat in right of way, but there's just nothing that needs to be done that I know of. Nobody spoke to me about it um, before this was done. I think it's premature, and um, the uh, I don't know what the fees and so forth like this. Do you all have contracts before you? Yes, sir, we do. Uh, do you mind what, what are the fees for these uh, for these right of way agents? Mr. Bob, would you I, be able to give I a brief think, overview of this contract? Yes, I don't think that the fees have been uh, set out. These are sample uh, contracts that are typical task order contracts that. Uh, that we have uh, to, if I might speak to Mr. Garrett's comments, is that there are a number of legal issues between the parish and Pelican Land Services. Uh, since I've been here, I've uh, investigated as best that I could as to what that relationship is. And I guess I, the best that I can tell you is that I really think it's a legal issue that needs to be resolved uh, between uh, the attorneys of uh, Pelican Land Service and the parish attorneys. I do not have a contract with Mr. Garrett or Pelican Land Service. I've not entered into one. I've not asked him to do any uh, work for the parish. And uh, however, uh, and primarily because of these uh, issues that are outstanding. I, I get, I'm, I don't have a good feel for uh, what that is and so I think that needs to be resolved on a, on a legal basis the uh, what I'd like to do is to make sure that I have the ability to uh, move forward with the purchase of right-of-way so I'm trying to enlist task orders uh, with uh, other individuals that I could call on to move forward it's not uncommon it's not uncommon for us to have task orders with multiple professionals in the same field. So there's nothing that uh, I think to be overly concerned, and I if clearly if the issues with the legal uh, department and Pelican Land Service can be resolved, then, uh, then it might be appropriate to have a task order contract with uh, Mr. Garrett, but currently I do not have one. What's the reason for this board? I have a comment on concerning that. I was told that uh, someone said that our contract had been canceled. It had not. And uh, to Miss, Mr. Garrett. Oh, I thought you were calling. Come no, Mr. Garrett, before we can get into that, I mean, this obviously has some legal aspects to it. All I'm asking this this board tonight is on this contract. This is just just a contract. It doesn't specify. It's just a task order contract, which we can do. And and I'm asking for their recommendations tonight of what they want to do. So if you'll give us a minute, just so we can we can decide that. Yeah, Councilman Sabwa. I can understand Mr. Garrett's concerns as far as the 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 ongoing that he's working on right now, the project that he's got going on right now. Uh, in saying that, I, I don't blame the administration for having or wishing to have more than one firm to pick from, and that's all he's asking for now is just the opportunity to bring on another one as a task order in the event that we need someone to move quickly. And if there's some legal issues but that that concerns you to use him, then I'm not going to – it is not upon us to stop progress. I mean, you, you need someone else on board. To move projects we need to bring a second team on and they can continue uh, with the legalities of what's in the past i make a motion that we bring this firm on as a second second uh, i have a motion firm. to bring this uh to, to accept this contract by councilman sabo and a second by dempsey lambert are there any objections there being no obje objections this can be moved to the council at its next meeting Please put it on the agenda. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Item number G. 
Item G is the uh, uh, a task order 16 dash or 3 06A uh, in the amount of $7,000 for Louisiana testing and inspection for completion of testing on the 2005 reconstruction uh, so moved, program. Madam Chairman. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Todd Lambert and a second by Councilman Jerry Savoie to accept this task order. Are there any objections? <coughs> there are no objections. This can be moved to the council agenda. Please place it there. Thank you. Okay, no, item number H. Item number H is one that we've had uh, an extensive amount of effort in in the past uh, few weeks uh, trying to assemble, and it's the 2007 preliminary road list. And uh, uh, these are roads that have been recommended for improvement by uh, council members and, and through the public to their council. We've uh, assembled the list and we've went out and uh, measured and made some cost estimates. And, and I have to tell you that they're not, they're ballpark cost estimates because we have not been able to uh, uh, adequately define all of these projects to the extent that that uh, uh, to to really be good at. But I think I think they're reasonable. And then we've related uh, prior priorities to them. Priority one, the highest priority. Two, uh, next priority, and priority three. I would point out to you, uh, if you will look. There are 148 roads on this list, 148 uh, legitimate needs for parish road improvements uh, that we have uh, in the immediate nature. Uh, almost 59 miles of roads of, uh, in the parish and at an estimated cost, a preliminary estimated cost of over $14 million. Um, and so uh, I'm not sure how you want to do that i i know that we've had some discussions that this might be the year that we do try to enhance the uh, road construction program because we do have uh, additional funding in the uh, in the budget and so uh, I'd, I'd be glad to answer questions that any of you might have on any of these we've broken them down by priorities <coughs> and by individual uh, council districts Mr. Bob, uh, I do have one road in, in um, I'm in District 4. I had put down there Duplessis Road. I did not put Tiggy Duplessis. It's a very short little road. It's not a road that could be widened. It's one of those dark roads that probably would need to be, you know, some additional striping. But there's some sections of the road that fall like a foot shorter than others, you know. So I, I would like to see the road more unique, if, okay. if possible. So could you possibly add that one yes. also to this list? Would, would you tell me what that road was again? Tiggy de Plessis. Tiggy de Plessis. And I had submitted to Plessis Road. I don't see it on here. I don't know why it's not on here, but I did. Uh, I did submit it, and the reason is because it's got some. Uh, it's kind of getting bad, and there's three developments going on up there right now. By the time this would get into the system, oh, I'm I'm sorry. Uh, uh, if you will look, and I apologize, I apologize for not bringing this to your attention. But the very last sheet is some uh, uh, additional uh, improvements, the 2007 turn lanes plus some road widenings. And we've got uh, Tiki Duplessis and Duplessis, Duplessis on that list. Oh, great. Okay, so thank you. Because we, we knew that we needed to widen it, and so uh, we've got a, uh, uh, that, that's really a part of the entire project also. I, I appreciate that because these are both heavily trafficked roads they're cut throughs and they're used a lot of uh, by people and they're uh, accident prone so I appreciate it okay. thank you anybody else have any questions mr. Todd Lambert mr. Bob maybe not on this list but maybe on a future list uh, mr. on our Elwin Dewey Road off of uh, 431 right by Lake Primary I had some requests to widen that road and I'm thinking the school would probably give up the right-of-way 
to on the left side of that road. It's Lake Primary, right at 431. It's not a lengthy road, but yeah, put it on the list as far as looking into it or get it rolling. I'd, I'd be glad to, uh, depending on the uh, committee's pleasure, I can add it to this list and and uh, investigate and put okay. a dollar well, amount to it, put it if you would like me to do that. As also, that, that add it to the be, list. That would be great. And one thing I'd like to see you do is to make sure since this is uh, probably not going to go to the full council, that every council member that that's not on this committee gets this list to go over so that they can put their comments in. I, I do have one council member in the audience that would like to uh, have a say. Councilman Hill and Speck. Thank you, uh, Councilwoman Fontenot and uh, members of the committee. Um, I, I, I looked at the road list tonight as well when I when I first got here. I didn't get it in advance, and uh, just a few corrections. Uh, the uh, when you look at the roads in District Seven uh, to begin with, uh, Mr. Turner, uh, Billy uh, Decato Road uh, that's listed uh, in my district road list, and, and that's I believe that's in Mr. Byerger Councilman Byerger's district Decato Road, if I'm correct. And so that needs to be moved to his district. And uh, also uh, Bow Road, which is listed, uh, it's one of my roads, is not in my district. And I believe that's uh, Todd, and that's uh, Councilman Todd Lambert's district. Todd, is that, am yeah, I it's, correct? it's in District 9. They don't okay. have anything on it, though. Yeah, well, they, they, they're, they're both listed uh, on the road list as, as priority two roads, and um, neither of them, uh, Mr. Turner, in my in my district. Uh, now, on, um, uh, I am glad to see that uh, Muddy Creek Road listed in, in Councilman Dempsey Lambert's uh, road list. Of course, that's he and I share that road, and, and I'm glad to see that that's a, a priority one uh, priority one road project, and I'm uh, really happy about that because uh, Muddy Creek is getting in really bad shape. Uh, on uh, both Little Prairie Road uh, and Bully Boulevard, Mr. Tur uh, Turner and Ricky, or, or I guess I should say BJ, I'd appreciate maybe we'd go back and look at both those roads because I, I, I think they're getting in bad shape, and I'm, I'm thinking maybe they need to be a priority one. Uh, and I had turned in um, sometime earlier a request that that curve on Billy, I mean uh, on Little Prairie, right at uh, Muddy Creek Bridge be widened in an email. I'm not sure why it didn't make the road list, but that's a very dangerous curve. Uh, Councilman Hillenbeck, I believe we do have uh, a widening project uh, on the very last sheet uh, with the turn lanes. Uh, yeah, and but that was not on there. Oh, uh, yes, uh, you're right. Uh, you do have listing. I appreciate very much the uh, S-curve at McCroy Road on the road widening. We had a, had another accident recently with uh, school, bu school bus and um, children and, you know, sideswiped a car. It's a very narrow road, and the curve needs to be widened at, at, at least. What, uh, what was the other one that you had? So uh, it's uh, it's Little Prairie Road at Muddy Creek Bridge, okay. and it's uh, it's right before you cross the bridge uh, on Little Prairie Road. It's it's a very narrow curve, and we've had some accidents with cars off in the ditches there. And uh, now uh, on the last page of your handout, of course, and I, I again I want to thank Mr. Turner and and ask the committee's full consideration on uh, requesting a turn lane at 42 and Ascension 929. Uh, that's a bottleneck and a half, and uh, with the amount of traffic we have on 42, we uh, really need a turn lane there big time. That's, that's it, uh, if you're not familiar with that intersection, it's right there at Payless, at the, at the red light, uh, turning off of 42, turning south on to Ascension Highway 929. Glad to see that's in there. Uh, it's, it's on the it's turn on lane the list. list. Yeah. The only concern that I have, and I apologize for bringing it to you, we, we were really putting this list together at the very, very last minute, and I got the wrong estimate for that particular turn lane. It's, it's more extensive than the 125,000, primarily because it's going to require additional right-of-way on 42 in order to get the turn lanes in. 
Right. And so it's it's really going to be up around two hundred and fifty thousand. Right. And 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 just as a suggestion, Mr. Bob, what you you might want to do and is get with planning and and. Um, I believe that corner's fixing to be developed, so uh, that's all I have Doug, on the delay. Let's, let's kind of keep it simple. Okay. Just give him your right. list. He's going to go back and all right. Just one you can final get back comment. with him. Uh, just you know, one on final that. comment. Uh, and we don't want to keep the meeting going too long. I understand. I understand. Um, <laughs> the um, I just want to, you know, for the con you know for the constituents and the people that drive 42, and uh, want to point out that uh, Mr. Bradbury, Secretary Bradbury of DOTD. <laughs> just mailed the parish president, uh, letting him know, which was forward to, um, uh, I assume, all of us on the council, that uh, he is recommending that 42, the next step, be moved forward on the essential list. And I believe that means after talking with the consultant that the environmental and some engineering design is, uh, is going to be asked for to be approved by the legislature and the governor. We and, thank the uh, state and, for helping us out. And on that's that. uh, you know, it's again just so people will know that's gonna be a four lane divided highway with a raised median, much like Blue Bonnet Boulevard and, and uh, Corsi Boulevard in Baton Rouge. Thank you, Ridge. thank you, Mr. Thank Council you, Council. thank you very much, Madam sure. Chairman. Yes, Councilman Gibson Lambert. Yep, Bob Bob on Simpson Road extension. I had you have it broad <laughs> as a three. I have a safety issue back there. Um, would y'all go back out and look at that again that I think was happening they have a best road on the, uh, the opposite side and we had a couple of them that ran through yeah. I'll, I'll so be glad to look at that again I'd, I'd like to bring that up on the priority list if we can possibly do that okay thank you thank you Mr. Chairman Councilman someone yeah Bob, on district in District Six, you've got several roads that's listed on District Six. That's in, actually in Sorrento. Can you make those corrections? I will. Okay. I might point out we uh, have made made some errors on on districts because of uh, we've just not updated our current road list. Uh, and when the districts were changed, uh, we really got confused between districts. And, we haven't been able to straighten that out yet. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Yes. And Bob, also uh, send uh, BJ a thanks too for this because I know he's been working hard on it. We've kept BJ running for the last couple of weeks doing this. And, and let's yeah. not leave Miss Liz out because yeah. I know Miss Liz has worked hard on this list too. Yeah. Guys, one of the things that we need to consider tonight is giving our DPW director a direction to go in. We do have lots of money. I've just been through the finance meeting and there is money in the road fund. And as Mr. Bob said, this is a good time for us to bring road projects forward. And he's done an extensive uh, list here. And, and this 14 million, maybe we can't do all of that, but I would like to see him, you know, divided up into several different, uh, different types of projects two, maybe three. Uh, we do have some things on the back here that may be different and see what we can come up with. Maybe a turn lane project, a striping project, and two or three at your desire projects to move forward instead of just a 207 project. Give them a project number and get, get something moving. So with that, I'll leave you guys to make the decision as to which direction you want to go. Councilman Savoy. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Fontenot. I think we need to go ahead and forward the rest of the council members this list and give them the opportunity to review it, uh, make any corrections if there's any corrections, and if we need to, Ms. Fontenot call a special transportation meeting in two weeks or something no like that. No problem. So we can uh, make a decision, go forward. Uh, one thing that we, I would like to share with the council is make, in making decisions on just how many uh, projects we cut this into, one thing you want to be careful with, you don't want three different contractors with three different construction crews out on the roads at the same time that will cause chaos so we might want to look at some staggering them to some degree or at least keep it down to a minimum of two you know what i'm saying so that's just a a, a consideration that needs to be thought about good good point good point anybody else have any questions of mr bob so basically we're just that's going good. to uh, we don't want to get him just to, to give us a Separate, some separate lists at the next meeting? 
I mean, if we're going to go forward with something, we really need to kind of have this list maybe broken down into two or three lists. But this is what we need. Because we talked about uh, in uh, strengthening our specs, you need, I think you need to take the roads, particularly the thorough, thoroughfares, and put those in one that we're going to raise the, the specs from two inches to three inches. Okay, and then there's, there's, there's another group that I'm sure we can stay with two inches, like dead ends. And that's what we need to see. Okay. Yes, sir. Th that, that sounds good. So, uh, you know, if you can go to working on that, and, and we have several different types of things, some are reconstruction, session, sectional patching, you know, just kind of put some like-minded things together. And I, I don't know if uh, this, this turn lane and road widening thing looks like it's pretty well uh, you know, on its own, uh, there may be some things that some want to add to it that they can look into. But uh, they got two weeks. If you can, if you can update all of this, bring us the turn lane list, uh, maybe even a, a, a road striping, some of those that we know that are important out there, and then take this big list and uh, and, and break it down, as Mr. Savoy said, according to the specs that we want. And uh, we would appreciate that. And in two weeks' time, as soon as you get it, uh, just give me fair warning, and I'll see to it that we have a, a special meeting to deal with just that. I will. And we'll invite all the councilmen to come. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, our next item on the agenda is uh, <coughs> roads to be accepted into the parish maintenance system. Motion, Mr. Chairman. Second. I have a motion in a second to accept uh, A, Pin Oak Subdivision, Misty Oak Court. Are there any objections? No objections. That can go to, t to the council on the next agenda. Uh, item B, Old Dutchtown Subdivision. Motion. Second. Motion by Todd Lambert, second by Jerry Savoy to accept North Old Dutchtown Avenue and Mill Point Drive. Any objections? No objections. Can proceed to the council agenda for the next meeting. Item number nine, request for children at play and speed limit signs on Tillerson Lane and West Road. Motion. Second. I have a motion by Jerry Savoy and a second by Dempsey Lambert for this uh, children at play sign. That Any objections? No objections. It can go to the full council. Thank you. Madam Chairman, on yes. that particular item, I talked I'm about sorry, speed limits. I'm sorry, Mr. Bob, I left you out. That's all right. No, that's all right. I, I, I appreciate that you did, really. But I, I want to know what speed limit that you want to set on that. It, it talked about uh, children at play and speed limit. Uh, so I need for Councilman you to Hill, uh, set Councilman that. Dempsey I think Lambert. we'd set the standard at 25 if that's in the, in the subdivision, so. 25. Councilman Fogg, are you satisfied with 25? Or? That's fine. Yeah, that's the standard. Speed limit signs already have not in 25 yeah. 25 is fine. Thank you. Okay, so we will set this into the motion, put that into the motion that the speed limit would be set at 25, which is the standard for the subdivisions. That motion has passed and we'll go to the next council. Item number 10, Plantation Creek Subdivision Speed Reduction from 25 mile an hour to 15 mile an hour. Councilman George Valentine. So moved, Madam Chairman. I have a motion by Councilman Todd Lambert and a second by Councilman Dempsey Lambert. He wouldn't do that. And are there any objections? Could, Mr. Bob. Uh, could I speak to that issue sure. just for a second? Um, I, I clearly appreciate and respect your authority to to set those speed limits and I'm not trying to dissuade you from doing that my only concern is that if you arbitrarily set a speed limit too low just as um, you might set other regulatory signs without uh, proper warrants they tend to be disobeyed in other words 
moving a speed limit from 25 to 15 may not assure that people are going to drive 15 miles an hour. That's correct. You may have to ask for significant enforcement to force people to drive 15. 15 is a very slow speed, very slow. Uh, and so that's my only concern. I'd like to ask Councilman Valentine, do you have any paperwork on this or, or anything? Because it is dropping below our standard. Uh, thank you, Ms. Uh, Fondo. Yes, um, per our policy in the past, we have been getting petitions from the subdivisions. Mm -hmm. And I, I respectfully understand Mr. Turner's uh, explanation on this but one of the problems we're having is if the speed limit is at 25 people want to go 35 so the residents of these subdivisions uh, since it is customarily in our policy that when we put a subdivision the speed limit is 25 the residents of these subdivisions are requesting and they're signing petitions at least 90 percent of the people in the subdivisions are signing petitions they want it reduced to 15 miles an hour they've had the sheriff out in this particular subdivision numerous times um, and, and ha they have issued some warnings but they continue to speed so they're, they're thought process is if they were you know reduce it to 15 at least they'll be below 25 there are a lot of children at play in these subdivisions there are a lot of young families in these subdivisions and the, they're requesting it to be 15 and uh, in the past this has been our policy I do have the, uh, the associated documents dealing with uh, uh, this particular subdivision and I also have two more that are actually not on the agenda tonight that'll be on the next transportation's agenda so uh, I respect Respectfully respect <laughs> Mr. Turner's uh, uh, explanation on, and I understand what he what he means on that. But uh, the the sheriff department cannot be in every subdivision all over this parish, and we do need to to at least uh, uh, put forth the effort to try to reduce the speed uh, in these subdivisions. Uh, you know, it, it's it's a lot of people um, people just moving here. Uh, some of them don't have children, don't respect other people's rights as, as far as being safe in, in, the, in the subdivision. So, Councilman Valentine, I, I agree with you, and I get more, probably more complaints than even drainage about speeding, which we don't police the speeding, we just set the, the, the speed sign. But that's why so many people were asking, especially subdivisions, for these little strips or speed bumps or something so that needs to be looked into so, you know so that we don't keep reducing everybody's speed limit we need to just put some some sort of warning strips and I, I noticed when I came off of in your sub in your district today at the end of JD uh, Broussard Road there's just some little bitty white strips but it sure lets you know it seems like they'd be very inexpensive and don't, don't damage the car right. so is that something you could look into in light of of all of these speeding problems? Yes, I've in fact talked to the traffic engineer in the city of Lafayette uh, because they utilize a speed hump uh, there that they say is quite effective and and uh, he was supposed to send me the information but he hasn't done it yet so I'll remind him again but I think that might be something that we'd want to do. I'd appreciate it if you look into that and bring that back as a report and, and put it on the agenda at some time in the near future. Okay. Councilman Todd Lambert. Yeah, Mr. Bob, we talked about that maybe before you come on board um, with Bill, and he was looking into the speed humps, not the bumps because they're a little bit too critical, mm -hmm. causing maybe a liability issue. So mm -hmm. I think the humps are a little bit less of a bump, which, you know. They are. The liability. We, we, do, we do need to check the liability on it. That was the question that was asked. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I, we'll I have get experience that up. in a speed table, what's called a speed table, which is kind of one step up from the speed hump, uh, but it basically uh, is, is fairly effective for speeds that are greater than 25 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. that it, it tends but that was a liability issue, you know, with yeah, the bumps. Yeah, there, there's That's a big concern about that. Yeah. Okay, guys, we, we do have a motion in a second to accept this uh, speed reduction. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll keep my motion pending. Uh, the signatures and stuff that Councilman Valentine has that they approved this uh, lower lowering the, the speed. speed yeah. Is that good? That's good. Mr. Savoy? Yeah, good. Okay, no objections. Put it on the next council agenda. 
Uh, item number 11, three-way stop sign installed at Central Park Drive and Hollywood Park Drive in Parks of Dutchtown Subdivision. Mr. Valentine, did you need to address that one also? I kind of left you standing well, let's up see what there, the, huh? Let's see what the department says. They, they might go with you this on this one here. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, policy in the in the past has been has been to get a petition, and a petition has been signed by at least ninety percent of the people in this subdivision. They already have one three-way stop sign that they are motion. To it. Thank you, Mr. Bob. Any objections? Um, no, of course not. I, I have no objection. the The issue that I'm concerned about is that uh, the council is a legislative body that can establish uh, regulations in the parish. As a professional engineer, I can only establish them by national standards. And so my national standard criteria says that I need to take speed and volume studies at the intersection to determine if a stop sign is warranted just exactly as if it were uh, warrants for a traffic signal. Now. In, in reality, those generally, the areas that people want to put stop signs are, are not based on volumes, but usually based on speed. And uh, our national standards say that uh, stop signs should not be used to control speed. And if you uh, watch, uh, it, it is generally true somebody that pulls up to a stop sign that they never see somebody on the other street for example they tend to run that stop sign and if they do stop they tend to try to make it up that they've had to stop by speeding on the other side of the stop sign so those are the issues that i have but i clearly respect your authority to establish those at any locations that you uh, wish I, I just cannot be, I, I cannot make a recommendation to you based on my professional uh, concern. Thank you. We appreciate your input. Okay. Motion to adjourn. We have a motion, motion second, and we passed this one. We didn't vote. Any objections? No objections. Okay, next council agenda, and we are adjourned.